If you're an experienced trader that thinks a stock, index, or ETF is going to trade around a specific price or a very narrow trading range, and you are willing to accept a high level of risk and have enough capital to cover margin requirements, then you can potentially profit from the short strangle. The short strangle is created by simultaneously selling an out-of-the-money call and an out-of-the-money put, both with the same expiration date. You collect two premiums from the short strangle when you execute the trade. Assuming the combined value of both options drops over time, you can buy the call and put back to close the trade at a cheaper price to lock in a profit. Instead of buy low, sell high, with a short strangle, you're hoping to sell high and buy back lower. Because you've sold options you did not previously own, meaning you're short both the call and the put, your risk is unlimited on the upside and substantial on the downside. Should the stock make a big move either way before you exit the trade, you will incur a loss. Keep in mind, this is an advanced option strategy that requires margin and has high risk. Assume that XYZ is trading at $70 and you don't believe it's going to stray from that price for the next few weeks. So you short the 30-day 65-put-75 call strangle for a combined net credit of $3, which is really a total premium of $300 per short strangle. The best case scenario would be to have the stock sit between $65 and $75 at expiration. This is the only time when both the call and put options would be worthless and you would get to keep the full credit from selling the strangle. Many traders choose to buy to close both options prior to expiration to exit the trade. This will eliminate any assignment risk. As long as you can close the trade for less than the credit you received, you'll have a profit. If you have to pay more than the credit received, you will have a loss. Three weeks later, with XYZ sticking close to $70, the strangle has decayed significantly and is now valued at $1. At this point, you've got a $2 unrealized profit. You could then buy both options to close the trade and walk away with your $200 profit per short strangle. But if you felt that the stock was going to continue hanging around the $70 mark, then you could keep the trade open in an effort to draw out more profit as the strangle continues to decay in value. At any point before expiration, if the stock starts to move, you can buy to close the trade to avoid giving back any more profits or even incurring a loss. However, if XYZ moves in either direction through the break-even point, then the value of the short put or the short call can get quite expensive. If the stock happens to move significantly, your broker may require additional margin or more money in your account to cover this risk. Remember, your risk is unlimited on the upside and substantial on the downside. The closer the stock is to $70 at expiration, the better, as the out-of-the-money options will expire worthless. If, at expiration, XYZ closes lower at $58, then you can buy the put back to close the position for about $7, while the call expires worthless and you're left with a loss of about $4. If the stock closes at $85, then it would cost you about $10 to close the short call, leaving you a $7 loss or $700 per short strangle. At expiration, any in-the-money option is going to be worth its intrinsic value. If the stock is above $78 or below $62, you are facing a loss. The plan with trading a short strangle is to generate income from time decay. It is possible that one of these options sold will finish in the money and be subject to assignment unless the position is closed. Therefore, if assignment is not desirable, buy back your short positions prior to expiration. Keep in mind that implied volatility plays a big part with the short strangle. You want it to decrease so you can profit from both the call and the put. To learn more about the short strangle, volatility, and other strategies, visit the OIC website at optionseducation.org.